Hi, welcome to the course in Agat 152, and that is agricultural mechanization and um, machinery management. So here in this course, we'll be discussing the different machinery and or equipment used in agricultural mechanization. Okay, um, and as also part of the CMO that we have to include also the um, different power sources um, because um, agricultural machinery or equipment they in order for them to to perform the intended function they also have uh, to have the energy supplied in order to uh, to produce the power required so we'll be discussing the um, different farm power sources but this is going to be a review since uh, there's um, different subject for that and that's farm power or agricultural power engineering so here we'll just gonna uh, review those farm power sources so those are the human power the um, draft animal power and, and internal combustion engines uh, and as well as the electric motors okay so um, before we start then I just want to clarify that um, this video lecture is intended to be a supplement to our lecture um, lecture handouts um, because there might be some topics that I will not discuss it here in detail or maybe not not even mention it uh, but the, but it doesn't mean that it's not included because it's it's all it is in in our lecture handouts so this is not a standalone and you should also do the reading assignments um, and every materials that's posted on our online platform okay so let's start now let's discuss mechanization what is mechanization okay so since um, this is a course uh, in agricultural engineering actually when we say mechanization we're referring to agricultural mechanization okay so the most in intuitive thing to think about mechanization is the use of uh, machinery or equipment in farming operations okay, and when we say farming operations uh, this refers to uh, from production let's say the land preparation the um, the village of land production okay so production operations so once you have um, prepared the land then you're ready for planting right so it's planting and then once you have planted then you 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 have to control or let's say maintain this um, maintain the plants for optimum growth so when maintain uh, in maintaining we need like for example pest control um, what else fertilizer um, fertilizer application fertilizer or and even let's say irrigation okay so once the plant reach its um, uh, it's full maturity then it's ready for harvest so we have to when we say harvest actually it's just um, cutting or um, I mean in uh, in a rice plant and we have to cut the stalks so harvesting uh, and then after the harvest then you have to uh, to remove the husk I oh, know not yet it's not remove the husk I think re uh, separate the um, the the body from the um, panicle 
So, so in harvesting, that's uh, that includes uh, let's say threshing. Okay, so after that, then um, you have to do some post-harvest operations. Like for example, it's the moisture content is still high. Then you're not able to. Uh, you must not store your 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 potty yet. Uh, you have to reduce the moisture content, uh, the moisture content, so that you can have a longer storage life. So post harvest um, operations, then that includes, let's say, uh, drying and um, storage or rice milling, okay, milling. Okay, this is milling. Okay, so those are the farming operations. Then of course. Uh, there are many agricultural products or produce, but we're just gonna focus uh, in this course. We're just gonna focus much on the um, rice products. Okay, so let's continue. So we say that agricultural mechanization, uh, mechanization is the use of machinery or equipment in farming operations. That's very intuitive, but. Um, uh, mechanization also uh, uh, deals with the social aspects or, or let's say social or let's say cultural aspects okay as well as the what else economic aspects Okay, so for example, uh, in the social aspects, um, so it means that, for example, there's um, there's a machine already available for for harvesting, um, but then actually it was uh, I think it was already years ago this uh, the combined harvester is already um, existing. Seems maybe the um, uh, sometimes, you know, in order to adopt this equipment or machine, this machine, sometimes um, the locality or let's say the country, or is not yet ready or um, is, or it's something like that. Um, they're not yet convinced to use the. The machines, or maybe they're convinced, but um, they're used to their own way or the um, conventional way of um, their farming method. So uh, those are the um, the social aspects. So the adapt adaptability of the technology to the user or to the application. Okay. So another one uh, I listed here is the economic aspects. So it's because sometimes the machinery is there and then they're also willing to adopt but it's just that the cost uh, let's say the cost um, not much budget so uh, still it's, uh, you can't be able to use the uh, machinery in the farm so um, I think these are the three that uh, place um, place critical critical role in the adoption of machinery okay so by the way in the economic aspects it also uh, deals with uh, for example you have a land area and then you are asked to determine how many tractors uh, that's needed so you have this land area for let's say rice rice plants and then uh, some some land area, uh, let's say for coins. So, um, you as an engineer, you have to uh, make a mechanization plan. So, how many tractors are there? Um, um, uh, how many combined harvester? Uh, okay, so now let's continue. Uh, for the question, now let's answer is why? Why mechanize? Okay, so why mechanize? Of 
course, um, there are many reasons why mechanization is um, is advantageous. So one is the to minimize production costs. Uh, another one is to optimize our product quality. Uh, reduction of farm drudgery um, timely provisions uh, better control or you can say preserve quality Okay, so they are actually, if you think about it, they're actually interrelated because once you optimize a, a, a product quality or once you reduce the farm drudgery, then you can also re, uh, minimize the um, production cost. So they're really interrelated. Okay, so uh, let's give an example to this um, situation. Why do we need to mechanize? So for example, uh, you you have your plants ready already um, I mean ready for harvesting okay so let's say these are your plants okay so let's for example your plants then this is the soil okay and it's ready for harvest now uh, um, the rain is about to come so for example there's uh, rain clouds here I don't know how to draw it <laughs> okay so let's say rain clouds okay so um, if you're gonna do manual harvesting let's say um, by human power then actually you can do so except that of course uh, we have to understand the the rate at which um, uh, or let's say the rate uh, the human power can can provide so of course if it's just uh, one person then it will take you like a long time to to uh, to really harvest your land let's say you have a large land then so you plan to include uh, many people okay so uh, that can also do the job all right now so if the rain rain clouds are coming then um, what do you think if you just um, if you just use utilize the the combined harvester for example okay so compare this uh, this human power to the use of uh, combined harvester okay so Okay, so it looks good. I think uh, this looks good. Okay, so um, by by using the combined harvester, then you'll be able to finish the job timely, right? So um, by just using one person or just a few persons uh, to operate the the machine. So, so in that way, we are actually um, we can provide uh, uh, we answer these timely provisions, and it's also a reduction of farm drudgery. So, and also we optimize, okay, uh, maybe optimize product quality, because if you do the um, the harvesting by human power, then 
uh, harvesting actually is you have to cut right so or cut cutting so, so once you cut then you have also to thresh okay so threshing is the removal of the body from the barnacle so you so unlike here the um, combined harvester it's actually a combination ready so it's a combination of cutting plus threshing like here it's a manual uh, another operation and then you have to um, do process that in a thresher or, or in a um, threshing machine okay okay so let's say this is your your thresher and if I if I try it right uh, it looks like this Okay, so you put the, um, the cut stuffs here, um, and then it, it separates, it actually separates the, the paddy, separates the paddy from the, let's say, a barnacle. Okay, so this is your harvested, um, harvested plants. Okay, so unlike here, it's already combinations. It cuts, and at the same time, it uh, already thresh. Okay, so in that way, um, better control. Um, what else? Better control, timely provisions. Okay, so uh, now let's uh, discuss the different levels of mechanization. Okay, so in levels of mechanization. We have actually four listed in our lecture handout mechanization. Okay, so number one is low, number two is intermediate. Okay. Number three is high, and then number four is full mechanization. So here in low mechanization, it's actually purely uh, utilizing human power plus um, or draft animal power. And then here in the intermediate, okay, so here the intermediate and high, something like it's a gray area, but of course you would know that um, this is more like mechanized and then this one is less mechanized but the point here is there a combination of um, human okay plus um, mechanical power sources okay except here it's um, you know I really think that this is um, gray area but Okay, but we'll just leave it as it is. Okay, so here the full is very, very um, small intervention of humans. So this is like the mechanical power sources, but specifically we can um, we can have an example of autonomous tractors. Okay, so please refer to our lecture handout for some illustrations okay so now let's move on to the overview of machines and equipment okay so we have um, the following operations for rice production so we have preparations for land prep uh, 
the equipments are um, okay so let's I think let's do a chart here so first we do land preparation we, we have to prepare the land uh, so that it would be um, so that it would be optimum for plant growth so that's the land preparation so after we prepare the land we use uh, uh, we use planting uh, we do I mean we do the planting or seeding operation seeding operations okay so after we we plant or uh, place the seed then we have to do some field maintenance so here maintenance so here um, this is uh, irrigation for example uh, fertilization and pest control uh, for not fertilization <laughs> sorry fertilizer application and pest control okay so so you have to maintain so after that then you have to do once the plant reach its maturity then you can uh, harvest so that's the harvesting operation right and then after that the post harvest like for example drying and rice milling okay so post harvest uh, say drying and uh, milling operations okay so now let's discuss this the land preparation so what are the equipment or machinery that's uh, that are used for the land preparation activities so one of which is the so-called power tiller Okay, and the use of implements plus implements so the implements we'll discuss this in detail so the implements these are the uh, let's say a disc plow uh, or harrow or um, many more so one is part dealer and then another one is the use of four-wheel tractor Okay, what else um, so that's the most common uh, when we actually we're just talking about um, machinery here okay so let's uh, draw or illustrate the, the power tiller so the power tiller basically is just like this And here's your engine here. Okay, so uh, it's a, a two-wheel tractor, and then you have your wheel. The um, design of wheel is actually um, it's not a rubber, so you have like um, a caged wheel here. So it's an angle bar. Okay, so that's how the wheels look like, and then. Um, if we try to uh, look at it in side view, then it's actually uh, this. Okay, 
Okay, so here's your 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 engine. And then this one is your transmission box. Um, I think uh, the pulley here is larger. Okay, so this is our two-wheel tractor. So the mechanical source, I mean the, the power source is an engine, and then the engine actually drives this transmission. Okay, so this is your transmission box. So you connect a, um, a power transmission drive, so let's say belt and pulley, and then plus some mechanisms like for brakes or for clutching. Then this one is actually connected to the wheel here. Okay, so uh, that is how how it works, and then it's uh, there's some point here, um, what we call as hitch point. Okay, so hitch point. This one is the engine, and this one is the uh, say the transmission. Okay, so this one is the cage wheel. Okay, so the hitch point this is where you actually um, attach your implement. So let's say, for example, you have a a moldboard plow. Okay, so you have your moldboard plow. Okay, so you can also attach other equipment, like for example, um, the seating equipment or many others so that's the power tiller or the two-wheel tractor okay so what else uh, we also have the four-wheel tractor so for a four-wheel uh, four tractor then let's try to draw then I just like to highlight the, the back of the tractor because there's a point called the um, let's say the PTO shaft. Okay, so how do I draw this one? Oh no. Okay, so this is like a drawing class, but of course it's not. Okay, so this is your tractor, your four-wheel tractor. Okay, so at the back here, there's actually a point. Uh, there's a rotating shaft here. So your shaft, rotating shaft, uh, that's what we call as the PTO shaft. Okay, so PTO shaft. <coughs> Um, it's um, something like a, a power supply to your to your implement okay so here there's um, there's additional links here like the I think there's uh, three links here okay so 
uh, we'll discuss this in detail when we get to the chapter of chapter. But the point here is that there's a PDO shaft where you attach your, let's say, you have a, a rotary tear here. Okay, so that's an implement that's uh, an active in implement. When I say active implement, um, it's not just being pulled, but uh, the implement itself is rotating. Um, I mean, uh, because of uh, the input shaft or input power, mechanical power from the PDO. Okay, so you have your implement here. Let's say you have a rotary dealer. Okay, and then you attach the, let's say the, the links. Plus, you have to connect this one, uh, the shaft to the shaft here. Okay, so this is, this is the universal joint. Okay, so you have to um, add this universal joint to that. Um, this one rotates. Okay, so that's um, a brief discussion in our uh, land preparation um, activities. Okay, so. Uh, we'll continue our discussion in the next video.